welcome to IELTS Face Off. Are you one of those people that work really hard to achieve success in life? Or are you one of those people that work hard because you really want to create change? That's the boss. Are you also one of those people that work really hard so that you can get promoted to higher positions so that you can really make important decisions? But of course, guys, with every decision and every ranking, there's always a lot of greater responsibilities that you're going to take part in. Think about all the young people right now that hold a lot of responsibilities. Think about startups. All those people that use ideas, innovation, creativity, and a passion to really create change. Look at this. It's a regular plan. But with innovation, it can be a lot better. But today, we're not going to be talking about plants. We're going to be talking about something that is related to growth, but is also related to the startup industry, and something that both adults and kids have experienced before. So let's see what it takes to become a good person in the startup sector. Yes, startup spirit will be the main topic of this show. Are you excited? You will be more than excited to face off our main guest of the show today, Nguyễn Viet Hiếu Linh a young visual artist, a young startup CEO. And next, as request of thousands of audiences of the show from the Malcolm Delta, Khánh Vy decided to come back to Cần Thơ with her IELTS on the go journey to meet a group of young professionals to check out how they face off with IELTS and English. Of course, you can't miss tips, tips, tips and tips section and you surely will pick up a lot of gems from this. Be well seated for the next 30 minutes of long week awaited show. IELTS Face Off Episode 6 comes to you right now. Well, this is our talk, and as promised, we're going to be talking to somebody with a huge entrepreneurial spirit, and of course, Hilling is here with me. So, how does it feel to kind of be in this environment here today? I feel a little bit uptight because <laughs> I don't really have much experience going on there, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've done a lot of things, and you've had two businesses that are focused on children's toys. and. So how did all of these ideas really come about? Well, I think it all started uh, since my childhood dream that I really love drawing comics. But, um, but as I grew up, I got more realistic and, and the, that comic artist dream was kind of became more and more impractical to me. So I decided to leave it behind. But then I, um, when I entered the university, I, um, I participated in a lot of um, extracurricular activities. I found out that I kind of built up the passion to make social impact. But then uh, it came to my realization that of all the all social issues right now in Vietnam, they all stem from the people's mindset. And to thoroughly um, resolve all those issues, you need to make some change on the people's mindset. But for the adult's mindset, it's, it's kind of a mountain to climb because it's already like fixed inside the head. Yeah. And the most sustainable way is to make an impact on the children's mindset. And that kind of started an idea that I want to do something that can help can nurture the positive mindset in the children. And then I also found out that the children, they, they kind of interact with story every day through you know, the comics, through the, the cartoon shows, and. And, and bedtime stories, and, and so why don't, I, why don't I create stories that can deliver them um, positive messages and can help them better themselves and better uh, society in the future, and that where it all came from. Mm. And you, you know, you've given up a lot of things to kind of really start this thing that nobody has ever done before. You've kind of like ventured into this um, unknown land. Um, was it scary for you? Um, it might be scary at first, but I think it was mostly because I fear a failure of being judged. But then I, I came to realize that um, it does not really matter at all 
uh, I might be a little bit uh, intimidated by the op opinions of other people towards me, but, but now I'm more focused on my own happiness and exploring and keep experiencing. So on a scale of descriptions, how comfortable are you at the point where you are right now? Well, I think it, it would be around maybe seven. I'm still on my way to bring my business to success, but it's not there yet. But still, I, I still feel happy. I'm still experiencing and I, when every time I look back, I see myself growing more and more compared to yesterday and I think that's that what makes me really happy. So what do you think are the steps um, that is needed for a person who wants to be an entrepreneur? What do you think they need to start with? The most important thing is that uh, you need to define the, the, the rationality to pursue that. Many people say that you should follow your passion but what you should, really should do is to attach it with reasons. So um, if you are particularly interested in some field you can go for it but um, maybe try to figure out like how that idea can help you generate profit in the long term. And the second thing I think is that you need to find some companions. And finding co-founders is always a real tough nut to crack. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like kind of like looking for someone to marry, you know, like mm -hmm. it needs to be someone who is um, comparable and, and willing to commit. And if you get the wrong one, it might be stuck for life. Yeah. So, <laughs> doing a startup also means that you have to be mentally prepared to, to face a certain level of uncertainty. There's no really framework for a successful business model and what you can do is just to, to try um, a wide range of possibilities. Now, let's say if you, you, know, you are Ling and you are a five-year-old to 10-year-old Ling who yeah. is enjoying your own games, right? What kind of games do you think you would create for a 10-year-old healing. Yeah, I would love to give him a set of board games that can help him connect um, with, other, with other classmates because the 10-year-old Ling is also a shut-in kid who just loves to spend time alone, you know, reading and drawing comics and, and try to avoid like human contact as, <laughs> as much as possible. So um, board game is something really amazing that it has a power of connection that no matter the difference, no matter the gender, the background, people can all sit together and have fun. Mm. So you mentioned something really cool, um, you know, the actual physical interaction and then, you know, to help people develop and then the communication. OK, so in the next section, which is the IELTS challenge section, I think we're going to have a little bit of some, that kind of thing of that interaction. So you're ready for, for the next section? Totally. All right. So guys, IELTS challenge coming right up next where we're going to kind of experience a little bit of a game sphere. All right. So let's see what the game is. All right, so this is a game of Jenga, and this game of Jenga is unconventional. We can't look at this. We have to look at each other and give each other a compliment while maintaining okay. eye contact. All right, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna start first. It's been a great pleasure speaking to you today. I really enjoyed. Okay, one of the things that I really like about you is that you are working to ensure that children have great toys to play with. Maybe? I do. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. It hasn't fallen yet, right? No, no. Yeah, I do enjoy our talk as well. You were really friendly and were welcoming and that really helped me soothe my stage fright. Okay. But one thing that I enjoyed about you is the fact that you are very authentic. Thank you. I really love you know, the way you talk and it really help to cheer me up. Uh, yeah. I actually like the fact that I can see that you are shaking when you were taking out the pieces and which I think I might have a chance of winning this game. Let's see. Okay, that's not even a compliment. <laughs> oh, baby, I... let's see. Um, I really love the way, you know, um, how you, you know, decide to leave your, what you uh, drop, what you've been starting in the university and go for a different way. Okay, and um, I like the fact that you agreed to come onto the show today because it is really one of the things I think you're going to add a lot of inspiration to everybody.
I lost, I lost. So I have to finish my sentence. Okay. Okay, okay. okay, so I think, you know, you're definitely one of the inspirations for, for the whole young generation. And I, and I love what you're doing. And I also love um, the authenticity that you gave um, in this interview. And even though I lost, it's okay. Because hopefully I will win in the other games that you're going to create. Okay, thank you. It's truly an honor to be here and to share with people my story. And of course, you know, to, to be a, a person in startup and to be an entrepreneur, you know, if you were to give our audience a final words, what will that be? I would love to restate my very basic concept, which is Ikigai. It's that find the kind of job that you love to do, you can do well. What is the thing that the society needs and you can make a living from? And I think that would be, that would definitely be a thing that you should pursue to the very end. All right, so ikigai, guys, is definitely not an English term. It comes from Japanese, but I think the, the elements of ikigai are definitely you know, things that we can take away. So first of all, do something that we love, do something that is beneficial to society, doing something that we're good at, as well as doing something that can definitely support us in our livelihoods. And these, I think, are the four guiding principles that are definitely at the core of many of the startups and entrepreneur um, ventures. And so what do you think? And let us know what you think. But of course, before that, make sure you continue to watch us because we're going on to the IELTS expert section where you will learn how to use vocabulary and you will learn how to use grammatical structures and learn some tips on the IELTS exam so that you're off to a great start in terms of talking about startups. Coming up next, let's get back to the master studio of IELTS Space Off with Phoebe and our British Council IELTS expert, Oliver Holmes. Set of handy tips is ready for you. Khánh Vy decided to come back to Kata City to meet those youngsters to find out their journey studying English and IELTS. And of course, we will find out who will volunteer to be voice of this week. But first, let's get to the master studio with CB and our IELTS expert right now. Hey guys, I'm so excited to see you again in IELTS Face Off Studio. This section is probably also one of my favorite sections because we get to hear all the IELTS experts' opinions. And today's topic is on business and startups. Are you interested in that topic? Yeah, I'm absolutely fascinated by businesses, um, especially in Vietnam. I think it's a land of opportunity, really, for businesses. Mm. I think Vietnam is it's like a cradle of business ideas and mm. business opportunities because there's a lot of things to be done in this and country. And I've actually I've met a lot of people who are um, running incubators, for mm -hmm. example, where they, they're helping young businesses to, to start up. Define for our audience, what's an incubator? Uh, an incubator is uh, a business that helps other businesses to start. So they, they take a, a business when the business is basically an egg and they help it to hatch into a fully fledged business. I think today we're also going to be going to a city that's not yet so familiar with businesses as well as startups. And I'm really interested to see what the, what the people's views and opinions are. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look. Khánh Vy, why don't you take me to Cần Thơ? Welcome to our talk on IELTS on the go, and today our guests are not only students, guys, as usual, but we also welcome a teacher, so yeah, let's check it out. Hello, thank you so much for joining us on IELTS on the go. Would you mind introducing about yourself? Um, my name is Deep. I'm majoring in English Interpretation and Translation. Hi, I'm Phoebe. I'm majoring in Advanced Biotechnology. You, you have the same name as our host. That's such a cute name. Yeah. My name is Duo. I did major in uh, education of biology. So you all speak English really well, but these two, you don't major in English and you study, you, you, you specialize in English. So as a student who specializes in English, do you have any specialty about English? I do enjoy watching videos and through those videos that I watch, I learn vocabulary, structures, and also intonation and pronunciation. That helps me a lot to improve my English. Yes, what, what kind of videos do you watch? Uh, I often watch some reality shows, and especially The Ellen DeGeneres Show is my most favorite show. Yeah, I gotta tell you that I'm a big fan of Ellen yeah. DeGeneres. She's really inspirational. She can talk about yeah. a lot of things, a lot of yes. topics, and very confident. So what about you? Do you have any other ways to learn English in your daily life? I can uh, practice my speaking skill by um, 
talk to myself in the mirror. Yeah. And usually when uh, I and my friends have free times, we usually um, go together and speak English. And as Chị Dua, now you're a lecturer at a university. You must be really busy, but how can you really balance your, your, your work and your life to study English? Yeah, I think uh, English it has been a meat and drink to my life. Um, I'm kind of like an introvert. I enjoy doing something um, myself. So uh, reading something in English, uh, especially like in science, um, make me uh, feel like understand something like easy, easily. How often do you use English in your teaching process? I usually um, show them a video, like about three or four minutes. And then I'm, I'm, I was standing there and then I explain for them or ask, ask uh, the student if they know like, what it means in Vietnamese. And uh, yeah, I get them to join uh, in, be a translator. But you do many activities related to English in the class. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to. Yes, I feel this talk really interesting because I really know well a lot of you guys and I got a chance to listen to you share about your stories. So on this occasion, I'm bringing you a present gift. Um, today I'm bringing a real-time speaking test and one of you here will be the chosen one to take part in Voice of the Week and you guys will have a chance to get the evaluation from IR Expert right away from the studio. Wow, amazing. Oh, <laughs> so I think it's time for you guys to decide which one will be the chosen one to take part in this challenge? I am not really ready, so I would like to like give this opportunity to to my sister. You do, yeah. Yes, you do. What do you think? <laughs> no choice. So I took the exam like four times, but my speaking uh, score doesn't change much. I got like six point five. So yeah, that's a, a good chance for me to get feedback from the expert. Uh, thank you for giving me this chance. Best of luck. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Off you go. Bye. I'll see you again. Yes. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see what she has to say about businesses and startups. Yeah. Are you ready for IELTS Space Off? Looking forward to it. <laughs> The name of Voice of This Week has been revealed. How she performed when facing off with British Council IELTS expert Oliver Holmes in a simulated real-time speaking test. And next, we will have a discussion in the Master Studio with Phoebe and Oliver on how you can generate winning ideas for writing task 2. All the good tips come to you right now. Hi, my name's Oliver Holmes. Can you tell me your full name, please? Oh, my name is Nguyen Kim Door. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions uh, about yourself. Uh, let's talk about neighbours. How well do you know the people who live next door to you? Oh, um, now I'm staying on campus Quan of Kung Tung University, which is like um, area for all the staff of uh, my university. Um, living there. Uh, my neighbors are my co-worker at university so uh, I know them very well like we uh, work in different departments but we know each other quite well. Thank you. Now in this next part I'm gonna give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? I'd like you to describe a successful businessman you know. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Mr. Fo, uh, who is running a restaurant and he's selling uh, organic food and drink in the city. Um, I knew him like for a long time ago uh, when I was like a student and uh, besides Brandon has business. He also um, organized some clubs, like reading clubs. And I went there a couple of times with my friends to read the book and to increase our critical thinking. Uh, at that time, before he had uh, like a successful um, business, right mm -hmm. now uh, he like fell many times with like some product. Uh, but he has a very strong commitment and passion to. Um, to his business, his work, and he invested a lot of like a lot 
a lot of time to look for um, new product, new way to plant the uh, vegetables and to store, to um, process process uh, the food um, and like think about how to um, advertise and read um, to the his customer and he also like prepare some conf uh, workshop a like small workshop to uh, share useful information for the customer and I, I think uh, he's like had a lot of fun when he doing his um, business and um, he has helped a lot of people. So to me, he's like a very successful business man. Now, in this next part, I'd like to ask you one or two more general questions uh, related to business. Let's consider, first of all, uh, setting up a business. Why do you think some people decide to start their own business? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think um, because they have something, like they're good at something. Um, they have a talent for something and they want to uh, share it for people around and also they want to get a financial benefit and some people they uh, have um, good products and they want to sell it. So uh, I think uh, if they have like a um, um, good product and they have a talent so they want to share and like to sell so they want to start their own business. Thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking test. Thank you for your time. Oh, really? Oh. Hello! Oh, that was a test. Oh, yeah. it was, it was good. Oh. It was, tell me three words to describe the test. Good. good. Oh. Awesome. And then awesome. Awesome. Two oh, awesome. Yeah. And one good. You must be doing really well. I hope so. <laughs> and now let's check it out. What well, expert will talk about your performance. All right. What do you think of Dua's performance? I think she's got great fluency. Um, she continues speaking all the time uh, with just a little bit of hesitation. But I'd say that that's one of her strong points. I would say one of the things I noticed was in terms of her grammar, uh, she does repeat some mistakes with uh, the present perfect or, or rather the lack of the present perfect. So. As well as that, she, she does use some complex structures like conditionals. Uh, she said uh, if they have products they want to sell, they should start their own business. But a very common mistake that a lot of Vietnamese people make mm. is putting a redundant so in the middle of these sentences. Yeah. So uh, they say if this happens, so this happens. Mm. We just need to get rid of that so. Uh, apart from that, I thought that um, perhaps she could use a, a greater variety of um, things like relative clauses uh, when she's describing the person. So uh, I think, yeah, a, a larger variety of complex structures are needed. Uh, maybe a little, uh, a few more longer collocations, more unusual collocations uh, or longer pieces of vocabulary would really help her out to, to get the highest mark. Um, in terms of the pronunciation, as I said at the beginning, I think uh, her pronunciation is generally quite clear. Um, although she does tend to use um, American English pronunciation uh, a little, which is absolutely fine in the IELTS exam. It's okay to use American English rather than British English. Wow, your performance looked quite good. Oh yeah, like uh, I feel more confident right now. I'm so proud of you and Chị Diệp and Chị Hương is also proud of you as well. And I do hope that you will be successfully get and perfect IO score and achieve your dreams of studying abroad. Yes. Thank you, me. And I also wish she will become a successful translator. Thank you so very much. Yes. Give me a hug. Yeah. Yay. And I also wish PB will become a successful person who works in biotechnology. Yes. And thank you so much once again for joining us and taking your time coming here to have a really fun talk. And now back to the stage. And we're going to talk about how to, how to generate winning ideas. I love how that sounds, winning ideas. Winning ideas, yeah. It, it sounds ideas like, that win you over. Absolutely. It sounds super exciting. So guys, if you're as excited as I am about winning ideas, check out this upcoming clip.
So Oliver, what's your idea as to how we can generate winning ideas? Well, I think in terms of the IELTS exam, and possibly in terms of life, we can prepare. Yes. <laughs> in advance. So um, uh, the same topics will come up again and again and again in the IELTS test. Um, we're not going to invent a new language mm -hmm. in order to make up new questions. So um, think about the, the big areas in the IELTS test, like, for example, the environment, social issues like uh, urbanization, globalization. If I were a student who was studying IELTS, uh, one of the things I'd do would be to look at as many different questions as possible mm -hmm. and prepare your ideas for a wide range of topics. And that will help you in terms of the uh, speaking part three in particular and also the, the writing class two. Mm. I think one of the great things about the IELTS speaking test um, and, and also the IELTS exam, and you might disagree and tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you know, students can literally say anything and you know, they're not going to be doubted. They can literally make an, an assumption that is at least when you know it's reasonable enough and people aren't going to doubt it whereas in a lot of the other academic types of writing um, you know literally you can't just make a, an over sweeping statement am I right to assume so I mean to a certain extent the IELTS test mm -hmm. is more about the way that you express yourself in terms mm -hmm. of grammar and vocabulary than in the content of your ideas um, but also with writing you do have to make sure particularly with writing, that the way that you develop your ideas is logical, mm -hmm. the, the, the supporting ideas are connected, they are rational. And if your supporting ideas uh, were less connected to the topic, then that would negatively affect your mark. Absolutely. So it's a good idea to, you know, if you're looking at a new topic, to brainstorm a lot of ideas on both sides uh, for both body paragraphs, and then just get rid of the weaker ideas, get rid of the ideas that you're not sure they're, they're, they're very strong. And if you have some ideas that perhaps you think are weaker, but they are connected to the topic and you can express them extremely well, you've got lots of wonderful language, then perhaps you should use those in order to show off that language. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say that you, you're given more opportunities to go off topic in the speaking test rather than in the writing test. Mm. You, you do have to make sure that you're focused on the question in the writing test and your ideas are re directly related to the topic. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, when it comes to startups and businesses, mm -hmm. do you have any vocabulary to share? Because I think this is something that's quite uh, laden with a lot of good vocabulary. Uh, I, I think the ones that come to mind now are innovative, disruptive startups. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Those, those sort of Silicon Valley uh, startups that are changing the business world dramatically. Um, creating markets where markets didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks so much, Oliver, for always coming by <laughs> and you. sharing all of your amazing tips. Okay, guys, are you one of those people that are looking to start a business or to have a startup of your own? Do you have that amazing, life-changing idea that you definitely want to share or have help to help you start that idea? Well, as always, log on to our Facebook page, to our YouTube channel, to our website, so that you can find all of this information and really connect to the people that think like you. When it comes to businesses and startups, a lot of us fear the fact that we don't know exactly how to run a business, how to start up. Some of us even doubt our own ideas, and once we start doing things, we, we start to believe that, you know, maybe this is not the thing that we should be doing. Other people also give us negative feedback. One of the things that's extremely important in the startup scene is for us to have that confidence and to, for us to have that authenticity, for us to kind of deliver our ideas to the world. I wish you all of the best, and next time, we'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.